how do you reach the tipping point uh, one individual's action does not you know it's like the uh, as they call in anthropology the 100 monkey syndrome uh, like uh, when when does a critical mass of a community you know shift to doing that you know so uh, like uh, uh, unless we have a formula for getting a critical mass of people to do this uh, individual efforts are not going to you know shape especially when we have you know uh, 24 by 7 operation of somebody wanting to take charge of the water systems because it is financially lucrative uh, i am i am willing to come and bid for water in bangalore you know if if it is uh, you know remunerative for me right and uh, no, I will come up with uh, the backing of four consultants who say that you no, know, uh, this is the best way to manage water. It has been done in this place. It has been done in that place, and this is how you know you can manage. To the extent that you know, one of the saddest, you know, when Hari said, uh, "I am sad today," uh, but I I see a potential for change is where you know in one of the projects in uh, and now it is growing into several projects in madhya pradesh where in a adb uh, funded program the larsen and cubro has been given the rights to use water right from the right canal to the last drop on the farm as a farmer i don't even have a right to dig a bore well or or even a well to store water and in the command area of that, like in the name of more crop per drop of the Prime Minister, they are saying that it will be a, the, the whole idea is a very capital intensive irrigation system where there will be a dam where, uh, you know, from the right bank canal, the water will come through steel pipes. Then there will be sprinkler and drip systems for every farm. And uh, the uh, ADB itself says that it will cost per season close to about 12,000 rupees per acre to irrigate that land. Now, now what is happening is that is where the farmers are beginning to you know, raise up. See, uh, for the urban people, the pressure is not so much. You know, they can call and especially uh, those who can afford can call for a tanker to come. But in rural areas, if you go now to Chhattisgarh, parts of Chhattisgarh where, you know, either mining has taken away their water resources or something, people are coming together. People are saying, you know, so I see a future where, you know, people might, like the farmer producer cooperatives, they would also see that they would build their own water cooperatives. Because water is essential for any of these farmer producers. And they can't depend upon a third party for their water. So one is, you know, second is, you know, we uh, like the uh, the appalling insensitive of urban people. You know, I don't know how you create more and more, you know, information for them, and uh, 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 with very very short, you know, kind of uh, uh, like uh, uh, retention for them to be able to you know uh, pursue but once again you know in urban areas like uh, uh, hari you yourself know how you know water systems improved in dehradun after a program of you know uh, like decentralizing it into 47 water zones where about approximately 2 2000 uh, you know households were being managed right the system worked very well, you know, and uh, now, you know, they are trying to destroy the system with new funds from World Bank and uh, things like that. But yeah, to uh, set the context for the others, that we, uh, Sridhar and I worked, this was in 2003 or so, we picked the largest slum in Derudun. Derudun is a very dense, slum dense uh, city or town. It was a population of 600,000 at that time. Today it is about 1.2 million. And uh, what we did is, it was called uh, Gandhi Gram, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, we went into the slum and made the first the politicians, the elected leaders, and then the people themselves to understand how we could give them a system where they don't need water from the outside. Over to you, Sridhar. Yeah. 
so where, when there is a you know much smaller you know so similarly you know if there are uh, as you mentioned about residential colonies areas so where it is uh, still not organized into it how do we get a sense of organizing in those kind of localities where yeah. Yeah. there are no resident welfare associations or things yeah. like that which can be you know involved in doing this right then you know like uh, today i think purnima is there who's uh, who is also from pune uh, and uh, purnima and priya and uh, many of them are looking at water supply in urban area like pune which used to be good but now when you are destroying the river system in the name of beautification in the name of various other kind of things that you are doing uh, then the uh, you know you you are trying to destroy the source so unless there are citizens who are fighting to save the sources we are also going to have problems so i i see a future where there are going to be you know communities which are going to protect the source and you know how to ensure that sources are safe and also there are communities which know how to handle the water or manage it more effectively and efficiently there is another big area that you know for instance you know i am working these days you know in the last decade or more with uh, areas in the coal belt we have currently more than you know say probably 600 or 700 million tons of fly ash uh, and if you see urban sanitation and also the kind of sanitation that is being pushed to rural area today is water intensive so are there you know a new method of dry toilets and uh, you know which uh, don't uh, which flush with fly ash or you know uh, convert them into different sources rather than uh, using up water you know in a huge way uh, which uh, which could be avoided you know uh, and i think there is not enough uh, what should i say research or uh the investment into that kind of an area that has uh, gone on whatever i see is how do you reduce usage but not how do you change usage or you know find totally different solutions to it i i have been trying to experiment if uh, there are uh, you know like uh, toilets which can be flushed like vacuum flushed with uh, uh, things like uh, fly ash and which could later on go back to the uh, soil uh having said that you know the reason why you know we need to be looking at more soil you know is i think uh, like uh, upender ji mentioned we are losing soil moisture which is which is going to affect our complete uh, you know food security uh so uh the more and more we are being pushed into you know kind of uh, products Uh, which are you know like uh, commercial crops uh, we are also embarking on certain kind of absolutely crazy things like putting 5000 5 5 lakh hectares in the northeast under oil palm uh, instead of looking at various kinds of possibilities that we have within the country so like uh, also we should realize that uh, in the name of Uh, you know our uh, food shortages in the 60 the green revolution and the nature of agriculture the concentration of uh, you know crops uh, which which led to you know this kind of regional crop specialization where you grow you know rice wheat you know in certain areas sugarcane in certain areas has completely destroyed our biodiversity and therefore the appropriate you know kind of uh, you know material today we can have a millet machine m- mission but appropriate kind of uh, you know food systems that were for different ecosystems are being lost so unless we are going back into you know this kind of uh, you know uh, a cooperative effort in trying to bring back diversity both in terms of you know uh what the ecosystem demands yeah and the kind of you know communities that need to be built up Got around it. it uh it is going to be a very tough task sure we want to 
you know, kind of normalize across everywhere. That you know, whether it's uh, North America or you know, Rajasthan, we want to have the same kind of systems. Uh, and that is that is the problem. Every ecosystem had its own mechanism. So unless we go back to that ecosystem level planning and management, today what is happening? Like the investor calls the shots, right? So uh, you know, very recently we had a meeting of people who were looking at uh, coastal commons. And uh, what we found was all across, if you see today from Gujarat to Kerala, every 30 kilometers, there is, a, there is some industrial, commercial, some activity that's happening. That, you know, we, we, in very, very, very few years, we would have the complete coast lost. And losing the coast means what happens to the estuaries, what happens to the water systems that come into that. And in the Western, you know, Western Ghats, the, the space between the Western Ghats and the ocean is very small. So uh, the other, like uh, Upendraji has been saying, we need the pressure to be brought on on the decision makers. And I think that is again a role that, you know, urban... Uh, uh, people have to play. It's not just uh, you know saying that yes, you know we can we can do what we can at an individual level, but unless we bring in pressure, right, uh, to the decision makers, uh, to the scientists, you know, for in, for example, today the person who who heads the environment and in Indian Institute of uh, Human Settlements, you know, Jagdish. Uh, who, when he started you know, to work uh, with us in development alternatives, the first question when I asked him, you know, can you design a very small check dam? He says, in IIT, they don't teach us how to build a check dam. You want me to build a large dam, you tell me. I, I have, you know, I'll do a finite element analysis also. I'll also give you a dam breakage, this thing. But how to actually build a small check dam, you know, is not what is being taught. So what, uh, similarly, you know, I, I, I hear in the Indian Institute of Management, the, the uh, first thing they teach is don't employ any local uh, citizen, right? Uh, therefore, you know, you find in the entire industrial belt, there is no local people working. Uh, that is because then they say absenteeism will be high, any accident, then there will be repercussions. So don't employ. This is, this is what is being taught. So unless we have pressure on what is being taught uh, as to how to manage, you know, and also to pressure, you know, like it is not a, uh, like for uh, the uh, politician uh, ribber, ribbon cutting for a new water supply system is, a, uh, is what he is looking for or a new scheme. Because our country works, uh, works on scheming and schemes only. So uh, unless there is pressure brought on them to take rational decisions, uh, I think you know uh, we we it will not go long way. You know we have to give bring citizens pressure must be on them. A price tag on water, Nivedita ji said, will polarize the society. Rich will use it shamelessly, indiscriminately. Well, I have paid for you for that money. Who are you to question? Yeah, that please, is please understand that. there are hundreds of Malabians water footprint and ecological food, footprint. Hundreds of them is equal to water footprint and ecological footprint of one person of a developed country. Simply because they pay, we are not in a position to question them. The only uh, way out is a revolt. But my point is, uh, Professor Sridhar was saying, I see a huge change in the agricultural pattern. It is not crop per drop. We are in a time of calorie per drop. Because this granary does not support our body as much as we believe. The seed coating is not designed to provide nutrition to a human body. 
and we are not ruminant we don't have that flora in the stomach to break and digest the cellulose so 96 percent of the grain that we eat is thrown out by the body so my my only point is as as academicians and scientists some scientific approach will have to be developed because individually though you see hundreds of malabians and we are i mean we are nowhere knowledge propagation is a very slow process and right. i i firmly believe don't show a source of water to anybody the moment we find a source we will destroy it <laughs> that's what has happened the water table has gone down to 2000 feet in northern gujarat because of dairy 